Welcome back for another video. I'm Ehabad, a free-to-play endgame player in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we're going to look at something a little different, which hopefully you'll enjoy watching. Essentially, this Doom Tower cycle I decided to turn my attention towards the turn count leaderboard and see just how far I could push my account, to mix it with the whales of Raid. So right now on Nether 90, I'm third overall on 12 turns. I don't think I can reduce this any further without access to different champions. I would need one of Krisk, Foley or Anethway to have any hope of lowering the count. In particular, with Foley or Anethway, I believe I could achieve 10 turns. Furthermore, Nether 60 I have completed in 9 turns and I'm currently ranked 7th overall. To be able to compete with the best players in the game, particularly as a free to play player, is something I really enjoy attempting. It certainly gives me a sense of achievement to do so. So here, each champion plays a very specific role to enable such a quick clear. Whilst there is scope to swap champions and ensure a quick clear, to reach the absolute minimum turns becomes increasingly constrained. Geomancer is the absolute MVP. He will provide all the boss damage you need via his A3 and passive skill interaction. Venom Age brings heal reduction to ensure the spider does not heal back on spidling counterattacks, whilst his passive helps us survive the onslaught. Vogoth, via his passive, brings healing to, to keep the team alive. For Nether 60, I was running a cleanser, but switched to Brogni on 90 to push the turn count even lower. Here, Brogni is providing sustain and a buff strip, which we will put to good use. Leoris could be any wave clear nuka, and as mentioned, ideally for this floor of Nether, he would bring an AoE block revive, i.e. Foley or an Ethway. So let's start with floor 60 of the Nether Spider, and uh, we'll take a look at the run and the mechanics and how I've put this team together and how it, how it works in practice. So you can see this was the team that I used to get that nine turns, and this is how we do it. So we start with Leoris's A2. We want to cycle back to the A2 to have it available against the boss. The A3 would cause too much damage to the spiderlings. So on the second wave, we'll clear that with the A3. And now we're on to the boss. The boss will open with its ally attacks first, placing poisons across us, placing poisons on us across the board. We will open with Lurus's A1, no matter what skills are on cooldown, we do not want to trigger any counterattacks at this point. We will then cleanse ourselves with Scathix A3, giving us an additional shield to help us sustain. At this point, we'll open with Geomancer's A3 to place HP Burn on the main spider. With HP Burn active, whenever any of our champions receive damage, a portion of this is reflected to the recipient of the HP Burn. Furthermore, Geomancer has a giant slayer style mechanic such that every reflection has a chance to cause an additional 3% enemy max HP hit. So whenever we attack with an AoE skill, Every Spiderling counterattacks us with their AoE skill. As a result, we have five champions. Each champion will reflect each of the Spiderling's attacks. And each of these reflections can trigger this additional 3% max enemy HP hit. Usually, when Spiderlings counterattack, they heal the main spider for 10% of its max HP. However, Venom Age will nullify that mechanic via his 100% heal reduction, which is also an AoE hit, and it will trigger our first wave of Spiderling counterattacks. So let's do that right now. You'll see each time we trigger the set of reflections, and we have this 250k procs that occur every so often, and you can see the green heal number to the main spider is zero. And with Vogoth, we'll again use his AoE ability to trigger another wave of counterattacks. And again, we'll see the same consequence, these reflections plus these procs, these Giant Slayer style procs. Now with Geomancer, who has jumped the turn order because his A3 also stole 
turn meter from the main spiderling. We'll use his AoE A1 to trigger another wave of counterattacks. At this point, it's really just a question of staying alive and triggering enough procs to kill the boss. As I mentioned with the Orius, we wanted the A2 to be back off cooldown, as currently with this A2, we should trigger another wave of counterattacks, but not quite kill the spiderlings. His A3 would kill the spiderlings. As you can see, we just didn't kill the spiderlings, but we're having very bad luck with the RNG on the, uh, on the big procs. So we'll trigger another wave of counterattacks, at least two. We did strip one, and obviously one is dead. If we'd had better RNG, this would have been already over earlier. But I think you can see how the mechanics work. And if we jump back now to Nether 90, I'll show you the fastest run that I was able to do and give you a bit of a talk through about why I've subbed in Brogni and how I was able to get that run to such a few number of turns. And afterwards, let's come back to Nether 60 and see if we can beat this six, nine turns. I have a idea on how I might be able to get it maybe one turn lower. So after we've shown Nether 90, let's come in together and see if we can get that done. So coming into the run, there's a few things that need to line up for us to have an attempt at actually doing this run. Firstly, we open Brogni's A2. We need that proc that you just saw there on the refresh accessories. We also would need a full sweep of buff removal so none of these Kutraxas would revive on death. Unfortunately that did not happen. With that refresh proc there from Brogni we have a chance on this run. We'll get to use his A2 and strip the buffs from the Kutraxas again on the second wave. Lioris unfortunately misses the crit there which has cost us a turn but we'll give it a go anyway. The main spider will go first, put the poisons on us. With Brogni, we will open with the shield uh, to give us some sustain. Leorius A1, into Geomancer HP Burn, into Venomage Heal Reduction. And then really from here, it's just pure RNG. Do we get the big procs, the 294k procs that we need to get this boss killed as quickly as possible? We know the drill. Let's see how we get on. Fortunately, we lost that one turn on wave two. So it's one turn below optimal already. Managed to survive the nuke across the board. The longest Vogoth can stay alive, the better. If we had our A2 here, we'd be in for a good shot. We could get lucky. 12 turns. If we just hadn't had that one mistake, that would be an 11 turn run, which would be, I think, the best this team is capable of. But unfortunately, a slight low hit from the Oris cost us a turn, it cost us the 11 turns. Right then, so, so my thought process here is I'm going to take out my cleanser in the same way that against Nether 90, I did not run cleanse, and I ran more sustain. I'm going to bring in Helior who I've now re-geared, and let's see if I'm able to get it done. So as before, Lorius A2 into Lorius A3. The spider will take its attacks, and then we will A1 with Lorius. Now, as we no longer have a cleanser, we're straight into Geomancer, get the HP burn out there, get the heal reduction from Venomage. And we need good RNG on the procs here to have a, a chance of doing a record. Now, this is the point where things differ. And we're going to do add an additional shield on ourselves with Lioris, which will also trigger another wave of counterattacks. And then Vogoth, another wave of counterattacks. Then lastly, one more wave of counterattacks from Geomancer. And for us to succeed, 
those set of counterattacks need to have killed the boss. And it almost did. It almost did. So with slightly better RNG, we would get this down to eight turns. There we go, eight turns, a new record, the RNG we were looking for, we didn't have Chris, but we found a way anyway, we got it done, we made it work, come on. Well, let's take a look at the champion builds, there's quite a few different ones. So if we go recently used first, Lioris in Savage, uh, generally my arena build. Uh, I have done glove swap on him to, to increase his speed. So usually he's a little bit slower, but does have 100% crit rate and a bit more attack. But this is the build that I've got him in currently to do the wave clear. I needed him to be speed tuned for this. So I had to boost his speed up in terms of masteries, classic kind of arena nuka build. Then I'll show Geomancer, who's actually in Swift Parry. Uh, the reason being that if I took a lot of damage, he can trigger the Swift Parry and will stay alive uh, and, and continue to get that Reflect going with those procs even as he's dying, which uh, was very important on Nether 90. I don't think I could have done it otherwise. Here are the total stats, speed tuned, enough accuracy with the Venom Age lead to land the debuffs and then just nothing really beyond that a bit of defensive stats i didn't want to have too much crit because i didn't want to cause too much damage to the spiderlings with his a1 obviously skills are booked out and in terms of masteries kind of classic clan boss style masteries they're not really doing anything for us here a bit of extra war master on the on the main boss is is i guess uh adding some small benefit. Venom Age is in the build I used for the secret room, uh, solo clear, but with a, a boot swap to ensure that he is speed tuned. Um, down at 190 speed now. And enough accuracy to land the debuffs. The way I've done that is I've also done a banner swap. I was running a defense banner for him on the secret room, now an accuracy banner. And in terms of masteries, very much uncompleted or incompleted uh, just as they were for the secret room. Vogoth in a shield set need the additional sustain as I enter in and speed tuned to be the slowest. Not really looking to land any debuffs so you know it's the, there's no real need for the accuracy. The leech is helpful and would have assisted me against nether 90 uh, in terms of staying alive but uh, i prioritized the other stats here and i managed to make it work uh, the skills are obviously booked out uh, masteries none brogni is also in a shield set and with triple refresh accessories in terms of the stats speed tune to be fastest had him so he could strip the buffs from the Kutraxes, but not enough accuracy to strip the counterattacks from the Spiderlings. And then otherwise good HP, decent defense, just what was necessary to get the job done. Uh, in terms of masteries, entirely not completed, does have Giant Slayer, so can get some Giant Slayer procs on, on his Reflect when we have shields up against Nether 90. 
Scathix, also in a shield set. There's a trend here, right? <laughs> Mastery's not done at all. Skills, everything is booked out that matters. The A1's not booked out. And the stats really aren't anything special. Uh, speed tuned to be the second fastest, such that we get the cleanse away. Uh, and then the idea is not to have enough accuracy to to strip the counterattacks from the spiderlings. We just want that AoE hit to to trigger the counterattacks. Uh, and then Helior, who is my last minute regear and attempt to get that eight turns on Nether sixty in Savage. The idea here being, I want the shield to be as big as possible and provide enough sustain that I'm able to get the job done. In terms of total stats, speed tuned to be on the slow side. No real need. It doesn't matter whether he goes last or Vogoth goes last. He just has to go after Venomage. And then kind of the tune is to have enough damage to, to get a decent amount of of shield to keep us alive in terms of masteries again not done at all uh, i haven't really decided exactly what route i'm taking helior in but at the moment he's in warmaster which will help for boss killing and i think that is that those are all the champions that we have used and if we quickly jump back into doom tower we go back to Nether 60, we look at the best teams, we're now up to 6th, joint 2nd effectively, all on 8 turns, and that's that. We succeeded. We got it done. Right then, thanks for watching. I hope this has been enjoyable for you to see. I certainly enjoyed the challenge of trying to really min max my champions and and builds to get the minimum number of turns i possibly could i will be following this video up with a walkthrough on how to clear nether 90 using a budget team uh, and i'll also ensure that it's it's relatively auto friendly such that you're able to farm the boss for gear if if that's the gear set you're looking for this cycle uh, in the meantime, you know, please like, comment and subscribe. Any feedback is always welcome and good luck with, uh, with the rest of Doom Tower. See you next time. Just need some good RNG here. We'll get the eight turns again. And there we have it, another eight turns. Job is a good one. Fantastic. Woohoo!